today I'm here at a friend's house and we're working on his really good looking 2015 Chevrolet 1500 Silverado. And one thing that he came from a 2018 GMC Denali 2500, it had the big tow mirrors on it like my truck does. And when you go from those big mirrors down to the smaller mirrors, especially when you're towing, backing up, backing up at night, you get used to having those LEDs on the mirrors and you get used to having the big mirror. So when what he got is the sport mirrors on his truck and he's not really crazy about them. He misses the big mirrors. So what we're gonna do today, Boost Auto Parts has hooked us up with a set of mirrors to go on this truck that are just like the ones off of 2018s, except for they'll have sequential turn signals. The upper and lower portion of the mirror will be heated. They're power folding. And uh, big, big thanks to Boost Auto Parts. Now I've used Boost Auto Parts uh, parts before on my truck, the uh, marker light on the outside of the mirror right here. If you have a 2018, 17 through 19 Chevrolet Silverado, you notice that light burns all the time with the marker light. They have a mod that's pretty inexpensive and it's a pretty simple install. I did a video on it way back when I first started making videos. So if y'all see that video, don't laugh. I did the best I could and it was raining on me the whole time, but I do have a video of putting those on my truck. And it's a really cool option because it, uh, anytime you've got more flashing lights, turn signals, hazard lights, whatever, it's easier for people to see at night. So that is a really cool mod from Boost Auto Parts. And th they don't just do your Chevrolet. They do like retrofitted parts to go from your later model trucks to your older model trucks. Um, I'm waiting on them to come out with the S-Series cab lights for trucks that did not have cab lights. And that's what's on my truck. Uh, my truck didn't come factory with cab lights. So I've always wanted to add them. That's one of the next thing I'll be ordering. I'm waiting for them to come out for the trucks that didn't come factory with cab lights. Now, um, they also, if you've got a Ford, Chevy, Dodge, Toyota, Jeep, they have a ton of upgrade parts for your, for your vehicles. Uh, go to their website and check them out. The link is in the description, Boost Auto Parts. And for right now, we're gonna get these mirrors open and just see what we got. So here's my buddy Blake. He is gonna cut these open. I've not opened the box yet. They've been at my house for about a week. And this is the upgraded tow mirrors for the mirrors like what I have on this truck to put them on that truck on the 15 that was kind of shaky but so when we first open the box we have two more boxes so here are the two boxes we just pulled them out and discarded the big box and now can you get down in there and pull that out this looks like it'll be the passenger side mirror I will lay this over to the side And it's supposed to be chrome heated upper and lower glass with a, with the, uh, oh wow, that is pretty. So instead of where mine is dotted, these are gonna be the solid lights. They're not, we didn't get to go with the switchbacks, but they will be sequential turn signals. So we were just holding them up and checking them out. That's gonna be a lot more mirror. That's gonna be excellent when towing, when, well, really anything. And they also come apart right here and slide out for towing mirrors, just like mine on my 18. All right, now we're gonna open up the driver's side and look at that, they give us some stickers. That way you get to show off Boost Auto Parts. Yep. So, uh, figured everybody loves stickers. Oh, we expect this one to be opened up just like the last one. And look at this, they even put some merch in here for us. That's now this mine. video That's is sponsored mine. by Boost Auto Parts. So <laughs> wow, yeah. Hey, thank thank you, thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll put that on and, today. Uh, yeah, that is awesome. They do have merch on the store as well, and like I say, this is not the first stuff that I bought from them. Look at all that. Look money. at this. Wow. Now, guys, this may just be because they sponsored this video, but that is awesome. So here is my stock mirror on the 2018. These lights should be the same. My upper glass is heated. The lower glass on these from stock are not. And then this one will be heated up and lower in the same LEDs. Now, it'll also have the turn signal right here, just like what mine's got. And then we come around here and you can see the dotted lights on mine. You gotta excuse my truck having some road rash on it because it does have 540,000 miles on it. And this is the Boost Auto Mod. Before I did this, those lights stayed lit up all the time, they didn't flash. On these, with them being sequential turns, 
they're gonna light up and come out like this. So let's get them installed. I'm ready to see these things in action on the truck. Now sitting in Blake's truck, I wanted to show this is what you get for the mirror. And if you guys have this truck and you're thinking about making this spot for yourself, you already know what I'm talking about. I mean, and that's his complaint is after going from the big tow mirrors, especially when he's towing a trailer, um, this being a 1500, it does have a gooseneck in it. And if he does hook to any kind of little gooseneck car haul or something like that, there's just not a lot of mirror there. It's fine on a car. Well, especially if you're towing, that's just a small mirror. One thing I like about buying from Boost Auto Parts versus buying something cheap off Amazon or somebody else is if you notice tow mirror upgrade instructions and right below it, it's got a link to get to the instructions. DL3 small mirror upgrade instructions, right below it, the link for that. All lights video instructions, auto fog video instructions, reverse cargo video instructions, and I believe that's the one that we're going to be using. Ford spotlight mod video instructions and uh, boostautoparts.com. So they give you, they have a YouTube channel. I'll link that in the description of this video. And they have a very extensive catalog of installation videos on their products. And I love that about them because I'll be honest with you, I've watched their videos like four or five times before I decided to tackle this job. Now, as you might've guessed, the first step to this process is gonna be removing this door panel. It's not bad. There's a couple of screws that we're gonna have to remove. I'm about to show you how to do that. And uh, once you get the door panel off, the rest of it's relatively easy. One of the first ones I'm gonna take out is right here in the grab handle on the door. There is a little plastic cover right here. And once you take it off, you've got a couple of uh, bolts in here. Next, we're gonna go right behind this door handle right here. And there's a little, you can see a little indention where you can reach your pick in and take out the next piece of trim right here. That gives you access to one more screw up in there. I want to say those are seven millimeters, but I will have to look and check just to make sure. The next piece that's got to come out is this here. So I'm going to take a pick and get right in here, making sure not to damage anything and open it up just big enough I can get this. You should really have a, a, a nylon pry tool. I don't have one though, not here with me today. So. You just be really careful with that and try to work it back and forth. And it just has these clips. This being a 2015, these clips are kind of, they don't want to come out of their, their holes. But it's okay because they'll go back in just fine. So right here along the bottom side of the door, there's going to be a few seven millimeter bolts as well. Screws, bolts, however you want to call it, that need to come out. I think there's only a couple, like one here and one here. And then the rest of it's just going to be pins that pop in. It's been a while since I pulled one of the door panels off, but I'm thinking it's better to do it with the window down. I hope so, because that's how we're going to do it. If I mess up, I'll let you guys know. And I'm going to start by taking these two on the bottom out. I do have a magnetic tool tray and a floorboard that I'm using to catch all my bolts. I also have a magnet here that I can use to reach down and grab the bolts when I'm hitting them out. There's one more that's kind of nasty to get at, right up in here. It's not hard to get at. You just don't want to drop it. So I think I felt it come loose. And it's also kind of aggravating to get started back, but most time you can reach in there with a magnet and start it with a magnet. I did find a nylon pry tool. I knew I had one, I just, couldn't put my hands on it earlier, but this door panel is being stubborn. There we go.
All right, so now that I've gotten it somewhat loose, go around here and make sure and get any more that are up through here until I can swing the door panel completely. I know it's got to lift up and out. There we go. So bring the back up first and then pull this forward. Okay, maybe you guys can see a little bit better now. So I'm gonna pick this up and hold it with my knee. Come right in here. And this should push down, pull back, and come out right like that. Push down, pull back, expand around, lift up. Now the next thing is we need to unplug this harness right here and unclip this harness from the door. Or maybe, yeah. So, I'm thinking this just slips off of there. But, give me some wiggle room to work with. Push that red lock back right there. Cam this open. Now your door panel is loose. Now that the door panel is loose, I need to figure out how to get this trim piece right here off the top. And to be honest, they have some very good videos on how to do this stuff. I did not look at this portion of the videos, but I'm thinking If all else fails, I'm a DIY kind of guy, and this is giving you a more genuine DIY experience. This is not a professional video by any means, and I'm not a professional at anything I do, so. There's that. And it just pulls out of the weather strip and the rest of the way around feels like. So. And then there's one more tab right here. You don't want to push or pull too much against this. So I'm going to go in right here and do that. Yep. So now we have this trim off. And to flip it around where you can see, there was one clip right here. And that's the only metal clip that was on it. There was these little push clips right here. But that's the only metal clip that was on it. One two three that old mirror will come off first we need to get the wiring harness undone so this one works a little better for that stuff so we come right up under here there now all we have to do is unplug this push the grommet back through, the mirror, old mirror will come off. Since how this is not my truck and I've not done this but one time before, I'm trying to make sure that I don't tear anything up. But if you look right here, there's a release right there center ways across. Push that down and at the same time I'm going to use the pick to help me. Push that down and you'll pull, pull against that plug and it just unplugs. So now that mirror is ready to come out. I'm willing to bet these are 10 millimeter. I'll go grab one of those and be right back. I'm gonna hold up on the outside of the mirror and just loosen it at first. All right, I can get the rest of that with my fingers. I'm gonna step around out here. And he has the vent visors on, so it's gonna need to come up and down to clear that vent visor. But first, we need to push this through. See how I just did that? There. Yeah, it was hanging on this, if you guys can see this. 
the way that that shape it almost needed to be pushed up or pulled down as it came out but either way it's out all right using a four millimeter i'm gonna come in here i'm gonna take this guy out that is a just a four millimeter that's six point but it was a good tight fit there's that one out all right so drop this down make really sure not to get the screws against the paint in behind the mirror or the vent buzzer So I'm not going to torque those down just yet. I'm just going to let it ride. That'll hold it in place until I can come around here and I want to take my grommet and pull it through. Not trying to pull it in half, just trying to get it seated. Oh yeah. There's that. So now, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Battery keeps popping out. I think that looks pretty doggone good myself. All right, now on to the next step, let's get them wired up. So now that I have the mirror on, all this is done. The next thing is moving on to the wiring. Now I'm not sure if I wanna put the wiring instructions in here, but we'll also put the little tabs back in that came on the new harness, but um, I'm not sure that I want to do that. There's an extremely good video on Boost Auto. It'll also be linked in the description of this video to show how to do the wiring right here. But it's pretty much just pulling out, taking out two of the wires and replacing them with two of these wires. And then you run this down around through here and out into this connector. And I'm about to do that now. Um, but I would rather you watch that from Boost Auto Parts website or their YouTube channel. All right, so I'll show you what I have done. This clip just barely pops up like so. Then according to what I saw with the clip facing down, you pull this pin and the one right beside of it and they just slip out right like that. And then I'll need to get this one right here beside of it, pin one and two. I'll go ahead and do that now. When I'm the way that I did that is I took and grabbed a hold of the wire and put pressure, and it just popped out. But it's kind of hard to hold the camera and do that at the same time, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, pop both of those out and check the directions one more time, make sure I'm putting the right wires back in their place. And it shows I will not need the red wire, so I will do away with it. I got this done. All I did is barely pop that out. Like I said, took some pliers with some teeth, not cutting pliers, but something I clamped down and pull, pulled against position, the pin number one, pin number two, put the blue wire back in pin number one, the white wire back in pin number two, which are side by side, top right hand corner on the opposite side of where the lock is. Press that lock back down. Now I'm going to Cut these right there. 
the old pins, cut them off, and then I'll be taping those up. I'll just tape them individually down right here where they can't touch touch each other and show it out. And I also am not going to be using this red wire, so I'm going to cut it and remove it from the harness. That way it's not confusing later on if someone else goes in to look at it. And discard that. Now the next step is the speaker needs to be removed right here. So we're going to go ahead and put our 7 millimeter back on. The reason the speaker needs to be removed is because we're going to, um, and it can stick, but I'll grab the plastic pry tool, try to get in behind it and work it, work it around a little bit. There we go. And it's got a clip right there. So now, I'll unplug it and get rid of this clip right here now we got the speaker loose lay it to the side where it doesn't get damaged and what that's going to do we're going to take this grommet push it back through the hole and I probably should have done this first but I was just not thinking honestly and fish all this out that speaker hole where we got room to work on it. I had lost audio right here. All I was doing is these two wires have got to go through this grommet. That way you can run them around to the door jam connector. So I poke a hole through the, the grommet there and push the wires through. And then put, put them right through that cover that goes out to the door jam connector. All right, the blue that we just ran through, I put it in slot 11. The white I put into slot 9, and they are numbered. But check Boost Auto's video for reference before you do this because that's what I just did so anyway now if I tape this up right around through here where it'll run right there that keeps all this is going to be inside the door where it's not exposed and everything will go back just like it's supposed to so I did just tape these two wires right here around went through there now I'm gonna pull this back through like it supposed to be and then on this one I just fished it through the door and we're gonna line this up very very carefully because these cam connectors I'm just I'm not gonna say I'm not a fan I just they make me nervous I'm get it lined up and I'm doing that by feel right now because there's no way we can all see now that I've got that back in, just push it on back up into the other connector, which is really hard to do and hold the phone. And that will unlock the cam to where you can bring it right around as best I can for you. And then bring that on over and it locks back into place. Then we can put our cover back into place, which will just lock the hook in on the bottom. Just like that. Compress it on the bottom, and then just snap it back in on top. Now, we should be good. Go ahead and push this in this one in put this 
back on the uh, little holder it goes on to. Which is easier said than done, looks like, with one hand, right like that. And then plug this back up. So it took me just a minute to figure out that there is a finger on the back side of this that goes right around through here. And you just want to catch it right there where the weather stripping will lay back over it. And it'll actually grab on the back side of that door panel. And then whenever it comes back around, then you just get the weather stripping to the outside of it. Right like so. The easiest way I found to do this is you'll see these little, where that split, put those right in there. That way they'll line up with the door panel. And then we'll put the weather stripping back on and it just lays right in here like so. A little bit tighter, a little bit of a tight fit, but gonna go on, work it down really good. Then we're ready to put the door panel back on. Just like my 2018, turn them off, turn them on. They are really putting a light out back there. That is awesome. So that has this project all wrapped up. Um, the install was really simple and easy, just like I thought it would be with Boost Auto. Um, anything I've installed from there has been really straightforward with good instruction. Uh, the everything works the auto folding works the uh, spotlights work the heated upper and lower mirrors work the sequential turn signals you can see them right there I like that I'm thinking about trying to get the inserts for my truck because I didn't realize how much I like that until I got it these also do come as switchback I'll try to get a video of that and put in my, maybe right here and I'm just not a fan of the switchback stuff. I'm getting old. I like the more classic amber look, you know, on the marker lights and stuff. But, uh, and like I say, don't forget, if you've got an older vehicle, like I'm thinking all the way back into the 90s. I have the 94 Chevy one ton Dually. When I get it painted, I would like to get a set of these to go on it. And they do retrofit to fit older vehicles as well, if I'm, if I'm thinking right. I know at one point in time, I think I'd found that for my truck. So if you've got an older model vehicle, you know, check on there to see if you can ret retrofit the newer mirrors back to uh, the older, older style. Anyway, like I say, I guess I'm about done. It's fishing to start pouring rain. It's already been raining here this morning. Uh, that's one reason I was in a hurry to get the install done yesterday. Uh, also, check out their merch. I don't wear hats. I've never really felt like I look right in a hat, but I really like the way this looks. So I'll probably be wearing this one out. But, uh, that's about it. Big thanks once again to Boost Auto for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you got something out of it you like. Like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.